All right, guys, it's time for a Q&A. How are you all doing, by the way? I'm doing pretty good, thank you for asking. I'm in a pretty good mood, I'm not quite sure why. I'm currently working on the evolution of Halo's assault rifle. That script is currently in the works, something I kind of freaked out about because I realized, you know how YouTube tends to crack down really hard on certain video titles? I'm sure that YouTube's algorithm would really not be happy with a video title that has assault rifle in it. So I'm brainstorming ways that I can get around it. I think I'm just going to wing it and keep it up there. And if the views aren't like healthy, then I'll definitely know that something fishy is going on. <laughs> but that's currently the predicament that I'm in. We're going to kick this week off with a question from PT Savage, who says Q&A. What's your position on equipment from Halo 3, like the bubble shield, jump pad, plasma ball thing, and Halo Infinite? It's kind of a silly question because there are a lot of mechanics that can replace these, and they really aren't that popular, but I would love to hear your opinion on it. Um, so Halo 3's equipment, I think, are really cool conceptually. I don't think the execution was quite right. In As far as the campaign goes, I think the equipment were really good, but when it comes to the multiplayer, I think that that's where they kind of just threw a monkey wrench into the whole thing. And it's not that it's a bad idea. The problem is when you can kind of pull this magical device out of your ass that dramatically alters the gameplay, um, such as the energy drain. That thing's pretty serious that just out of nowhere, with no way to predict it, suddenly everybody in a, in a room, they don't have energy shields anymore. And, I mean, the flare, we all know the problems with the flare from Halo 3. Just suddenly somebody pulls it out and nobody can see anything. It was so bad that they removed it from matchmaking. They went in, forged it out. The equipment have a lot of problems just due to readability. It's really hard to predict what somebody's carrying and what they're about to use. And the equipment themselves, I just think it was a bit too much. They altered the combat in severe ways. Now, if the equipment were to be brought back for Halo Infinite, you'd have to do something that's a bit more, uh, I guess, complementary. Like, it alters the map flow in slightly different ways. Like, I saw somebody the other day bring up the, the idea of kind of like foldable, like a foldable ladder or something like that. Like, you've got this little thing, uh, this little thing that's attached to your hip, and then when you want to use it, you run up to a wall, and you take it out, and it extends into a massive ladder, and boom, now that ladder is there for the rest of the game, and play any player can use it to get up to a certain point or whatever, and there you go, you've changed the map flow slightly, and it doesn't, like, just suddenly give you an advantage in the middle of a firefight, kind of like the bubble shield. Now, the problem there, obviously, is I'm sure that exploits could be found with stuff like that. You know, it's easy to pitch things off the top of your head, but then kind of later down the line, your ideas kind of become bad ideas because they start to get exploited in ways that you didn't anticipate, which, which probably is why the equipment were very weird in Halo 3. They seem cool, guys. We didn't expect it to turn out this way. But that's kind of how I feel about the equipment. I'd love to see them come back, at least for player versus enemy type stuff, like fighting the Covenant. I do think that they added quite a lot to the gameplay loop, but, you know, I understand why they kind of are frowned upon in multiplayer. The next question comes from Unwarm Cub, who says, Q&A. I want to start a short film channel. I love filming, editing, and writing, but I have a hard time getting anything done. I start writing something, and then I'll start writing another script and completely stop working on the other script. I also have a problem of trying to overcomplicate the scripts to the point that they're getting too long for a short film. What advice could you give me? So this advice is almost universal. It doesn't just apply to writing short films and stuff. For YouTube, for example, I run into this problem a lot where you take on way more than you can chew. And it's, it's really a problem that a lot of people have. A piece of advice that I would give when you're kind of over-ambitious and you've burnt yourself out before you even begin is start unbelievably small. Like, 
don't make your projects these grand things. Have one point that you want to achieve and achieve that point. Don't layer on all this stuff. Make the most simple thing that you can. And once you've nailed that simple thing, then you can start to include other ideas for your next project. Back in high school, so I have ADHD, and it makes focusing very hard for me uh, in a school-type environment. And back when I was in high school, it was incredibly hard to focus on lectures for teachers and, you know, just listening to lessons being taught. So what the teachers let me do is they let me draw because it, for some reason it helped me focus. I know it seems weird. It no, I know it seems like I'm being distracted, but for some reason, if I can get the creative part of my brain focused on the drawing, it allows me to just absorb the information <laughs> via osmosis. <laughs> so by the end of the lesson, I've got a sketchbook full of drawings and I completely remember everything that I was told. The problem though, as I continued to draw, was my drawings got more crazier and more ambitious and I stopped finishing drawings because they kind of got out of control. It was a little bit too much for me to finish. And I've got entire sketchbooks in my closet that are just full of unfinished projects that I can't go back and finish. I should have dialed myself down and focus it, focused on simpler things. I hope that that advice helps. So this question comes from Mr. Macho, who says Q&A. How do you think fan games will affect the course of Halo Infinite? Do you think that because of games like Installation 01 that will be free while Halo, while Halo Infinite will cost $60, that Halo Infinite might not reach its potential in terms of player base? On PC, of course. So this is actually a very good question, it's why I picked it. Now this isn't a disrespect to the fan games, of course. Installation 01 I do think is coming along nicely. I do think it's taking a little while <laughs> and was probably prematurely announced. Uh, but I do think the development is coming along swimmingly and the game does look like a lot of fun. I definitely know I'll be playing a hell of a lot of it. Now, when it comes to the games, though, will they kind of be in competition with the mainline Halo games? The reason I said no disrespect is I don't think there will be competition. The reason I say that is not for... as Not, not as a slight on the fan-made games. It's more of just it's the AAA powerhouse. When you've got an aggressive marketing campaign, high production value with these next-gen visuals and super high-quality graphics and models, fan games are not really something that people are going to pay attention to because they're basically told by AAA gaming that you should be focusing on this. This is the game that costed more money. And you'll see people kind of gravitating towards those games a bit more. Now, that's not to say that the fan-made games won't do well, because the beauty of cult followings is that they are devoted to whatever it is that they enjoy, to the point that they'll kind of venture outside of their cult game of choice to try out the new stuff, but inevitably return back to their favorite cult game. And I have a feeling that's what we're gonna see with Installation 01 and some of the other fan games. They're gonna generate their own little communities. I don't think that either game, Infinite or hey, Installation 01, will interfere with each other. I think that they're fine. I wouldn't worry about that. Those are some of the really interesting questions that I do enjoy answering. So if you guys have any interesting questions kinda like that, let me know. But the next question comes from Venatius Vanilla, who says, Q&A, hello Taras. How do you think infinite gameplay will be, considering that it will be an open world game? How do you think the encounters in the open world will be? The activities, main missions, collectibles, landscapes, biomes overall. P.S. Endless Space 2 would be a game you like. Um, so... We don't know if Halo Infinite will be an open world game. It's something that's being thrown around in the community as speculation, and I think some people have taken it as a fact. Halo Infinite has not been confirmed as open world. Uh, it hasn't even been confirmed as a first person shooter yet. <laughs> like, you know, we don't know anything about it. 
we know a couple details about the story. Uh, there are leaks here and there, but obviously leaks you have to take with a grain of salt. So let's think of this more like a thought experiment. What if Halo Infinite is open world? Now, if I had a gun pointed at my head and I was forced to design an open world Halo game, because I don't really think Halo needs to be open world, but if I needed it to be open world, if it was life or death, here's how I would kind of structure Halo in an open world setting and how I would maybe tackle Halo Infinite. So the loadout system, though controversial from Halo 4, I would bring back in an open world setting. The idea being that you customize your loadout. So your two loadouts, or your loadout slots, I guess, your primary would be a precision weapon, like a battle rifle, DMR, or whatever, and your secondary would be something more for close range, like the assault rifle, the SMG, shotgun, or anything kind of like that. And then the idea would be, you go out into the open world, if you want covenant weapons, you'd pick them up from the covenant and stuff. Um, the way that I would kind of handle almost like restocking, I guess, is you could have troop transport warthogs or supply depots out in the open world that you can use to fiddle with your class and change it up a little bit, you know, swap out some weapons or maybe even deposit covenant weapons that you found that you can come back and pick up later if you'd like to use them. I'd have a lot of encounters designed kind of like Far Cry, uh, not that we're trying to copy Far Cry, but Far Cry is a very sandboxy open world game, which Halo is a very sandboxy shooter. A lot of the freedom that comes with the player is not your core gameplay, but it comes from the choices that you make with the toys that you find littered around you. So. Basically, the philosophy to engagements in this hypothetical open world would be the player should have the ability to initiate combat at any given time. You shouldn't ever be jumped on. So you'd see Covenant camps set up. Uh, hey, it would even give us an option to bring back uh, stealth in a big way. Remember how stealth was kind of a primary component of Halo Combat Evolved? And then it just kind of like never ever came back outside of a few obligatory moments in future Halo games. It's tough. It's tough talking about this because I'm personally like, eh, Halo doesn't really need, I don't want this. Uh, so basically every suggestion I give moves Halo further and further away from the Halo I enjoy, which is linear classic style gameplay and all that, but I understand that some people would be very excited about an open world Halo game. And even if it's not what I want, I would still be super interested to see how somebody would design an open world Halo game. It's not necessarily what I would like Halo to be, but I'm not going to reject it. I want to see what it would turn out to be like. As far as collectibles and the landscape would go, I think that you'd have an awesome time like fiddling around with some of the cool aspects of Halo. In fact, I think that's an open world would be where some of the cooler aspects of Halo could shine. Like as far as collectibles go. So, okay, let's go back to my hypothetical loadout situation. Imagine if some of the collectibles in the open world were iconic Halo weapons, like go into this cave, fight through the cave, and at the end of it would be a recreation of Master Chief's Assault Rifle from Combat Evolved, complete with 60 rounds. That would be awesome, right? That would be so cool. And we could even have it be like as a way to keep players coming back and back because we're in this like era of live service games where players really value replayability and kind of turning a game into their hobby. Uh, maybe when you get the Master Chief Classic Assault Rifle, it's not something that you have permanently. You haven't unlocked it permanently. You can use it until it's completely out of ammo or until you die. And then the only way to get it again is to go back into that cave, like at the end of the week or whatever, when it respawns. Like, stuff like that that we could brainstorm on how we could uh, turn Halo Infinite's open world into a hobby. You know, just stuff like that. Now, biomes. The Halo rings have wildly different biomes that are all sorts of crazy. Like, uh, in 
think of uh, the arc in Halo 3. One minute you're in a forest with lots of pine and then bam, snow is everywhere. Or even Combat Evolved, how we can go from grassy plains to snowy cavernous ravines to muddy swamps. We can explore lots of different biomes within Halo, and the kind of barrier between the different biomes can be a giant forerunner wall, kind of like in Halo 3, the way you approach a big massive metal gate, the gate opens, and on the other side of the gate is just a wildly different biome. We could explore lots of interesting ideas with that, but those are kind of my thoughts just spitballing off the top of my head right now. The next question comes from Oliver Stockwin, who says, Q&A, do you think it would be cool to bring AI bots into Halo Infinite's multiplayer? Because it was an awesome feature to be playing games like Call of Duty and Star Wars Battlefront offline. I think those developers tried to give the offline community a simulation of the game's multiplayer experience if they don't want to go up against real players when they start playing multiplayer. I definitely, definitely agree here. AI and bots is something that I do think Halo desperately needs. Uh, Halo 2 kind of showed us you can't really have a game last forever when the servers shut off at some point. There does need to be kind of like a, a shadow of the multiplayer experience that you can go back and revisit. Some of my favorite games as a kid were the games that had AI multiplayer support. Now, in part, that's because I couldn't play online because I didn't have Xbox Live, and in the case of my PC, I was way too bad at multiplayer to even think about playing with other players. So I spent a lot of my time playing offline bot matches, and it was a lot of fun. Some of my favorite memories come from bot multiplayer matches. With Halo Infinite, I do understand that Halo is a bit of a different type of situation because Halo requires a lot of critical thinking in its gameplay. It requires juggling different guns. It requires strategy, where with Call of Duty, the modern Call of Duties have bot support. It's very just reactionary. You just aim down your sights and shoot at whatever is in view. There isn't a lot of strategic thinking in terms of your environment. It also, you know, helps that every map in Halo in Call of Duty now is three lanes, so it's not that complicated. Halo, I, I wouldn't even know where to start with AI support. Maybe people who are more into tech could extensively answer the question of would it be difficult to make convincing bots for Halo multiplayer? But to answer your question, I love to see bot support. I don't know if it would be realistic though, at least for the developers. The final question that we will close the Q&A off with is from Dylan Heath who says, Q&A, hey late night, my question is, what are your thoughts on the UNSC Infinity as the sort of main hub of operations in Halos 4, 5, and probably Infinite? Every other main ship in Halo has either been taken over by the Flood, thanks Miranda, or literally sliced in half. It's sort of a tradition that the ship either goes down or gets beaten up. What do you think will happen to the UNSC Infinity in Halo Infinite? Love your videos, Dylan. So first off, I actually quite like the Infinity. I think it's a really cool ship. I think its design is really cool. Uh, I just think, you know, it's neat as a location and kind of like as a framing device around where a lot of the adventures take place for Halo. It kind of reminds me of the Pillar of Autumn in a lot of ways, but I do anticipate it to go down in Halo Infinite. What I think will probably happen with the Infinity is in the Halo Infinite trailers, you can see some equipment, and the equipment seems to be designated to the UNSC Eternity. Now, in the lore for Halo, the Eternity was actually a sister ship to the Infinity. Originally, there were supposed to be two of them. Um, then, because of like a whole series of different things, the Infinity's production had to be sped up. So there wasn't enough time to actually get two ships out to space. So what happened to the Eternity was it was kind of cannibalized, stripped apart, and its parts were then relocated over to the Infinity to help finish its development so it could get out there into space quickly. What I anticipate is the Eternity will be our new ship going forward. 
What's probably going to happen is the Infinity will be destroyed by the dumb robot overlords or whatever. Um, and the Eternity, because it's so outdated and it's kind of disconnected from the UNSC in a lot of ways because it's this old rusty bucket of bolts that was never finished, it'll be kind of our new uh, hub and also an excuse to bring back a lot of classic designs. In fact, I think that's probably what they're going to be using as an excuse to bring back the old art style and get rid of a lot of the Reclaimer era stuff is they're probably going to have to make use of the Eternity and how outdated it is to, you know, fight back or whatever. I have no idea. We're really just theorizing at this point, but those are my thoughts on that, man. And guys, that closes off another successful Q&A session. So leave your questions down below with Q&A beforehand so I know that it's a question you want me to answer. Hopefully, I'll be able to answer it. So I'm going to be out of town for a few days. I'm going to be in Pennsylvania visiting family. Um, but hopefully, I can get back in time for the Monday Q&A next week. If not, we'll definitely be doing it Tuesday again. And I am going to see if I can finish that Evolution of the Assault Rifle video so I can get it out before I leave. But guys, I will see you in the next video whenever it may be. And I hope you guys have a good rest of your day.